Hey friends, this is Chris and Kern speaking. And the other day a friend of mine gave me his old MacBook and I realized that all the MacBooks that they are selling for the past couple of years come with this uh, USB PD charger and USB-C to USB-C cables. So I thought, hmm, I have more than one of those Apple cables and I'm quite curious to hear what they can do and what they can't do. So I got all of them out. Um, this is the one that originally came with the MacBook and you can see that it's already quite used so it's it's not new in any kind um, of the spectrum anymore but I also got this cable um, which is a certified um, Apple cable with uh, 240 watts of charging power and I think 2 meters of length and the third one I got is this Thunderbolt 4 cable that I also got from Apple originally and it comes with a price tag of I think 150 euros when I when I bought it so I'm quite curious to see how that actually behaves uh, if we test it with our cable tester. So let's get in the tester and see what we can actually measure with it. Uh, first let's connect it to power, let it boot up for a second and then get, it, get in the original cable. So that's the one I got with the MacBook. It is also 2 meters I think, so all of them are the same length. And if I connect it to the left and right port we can see that it's going to measure. So, what can we measure? Okay, that's interesting. So, the cable actually is an, an active USB PD cable um, with passive, I think, uh, transmission. This is indicated by the fact that it can go above the 60 watt by default of USB-C or 15 watts, this tester says. But due to the fact that it's only a rated at 0.48 gigabits, so 480 megabits per second, it's probably going to be a USB uh, 2.0 cable. Let's take a look if I'm correct. Yes, I am. So it can do USB 1.1 and 2. It's, it's not a USB 3 or 4 cable, and it cannot do any of the funky debug accessory mode or audio accessory mode. It can go up to 20 volts on 5 amps, so it actually is a 60 volt. Uh, 60 watts, no, it's a 100 watt cable. And if we take a look at the USB connector pinout, then we can see that besides Webus and Ground, there is a D plus and D minus for the USB 2 connector, uh, as well as the CC1 and CC2 pins that are needed for the power delivery negotiation and communication from your laptop to your charger and the cable itself. If we go into the details, then we can see, okay, it's Webus Ground T+, T- and Shield. Shield is always good to have connected, but if you only want to use it for charging, it honestly doesn't matter. The Webus resistance is at 72 milliohms, which is quite high, but still reasonable for the 2 meters of length. And now we can see that it's actually an, an e-marker e cable that, ha that has an active uh, chip inside. So it tells us that the vendor is 05AC. We are going to take a look if it's the same with all of the cables, if it's still uh, an original Apple cable at 20 volts 5 amp like we just seen saw and rated at USB 2.0 and the latency is between 10, to 20, 10 and 20 nanoseconds which means that it's approximately 2 meters or less. The render defined message and the render defined message ID is still uh, the same and we can see that Apple actually is already at hardware version 0A so there seems to be quite a lot of versions of this cable out there. Would be curious to see which ones we can find. Now, with this in mind, we can take a look at the second cable, the uh, rated at, it is rated at 240 watts charging power, but nothing else came out of it. So if we connect it, we should be able to see again the same active USB PD cable with, yes, perfect, it is a 250 watts cable, so it advertises itself as 48 volts at 5 amp, amp, I think, or 50 volts at 5 amp maximum. The cable health again is 100%, so it is quite new. And the data speed is 0 0.48 gigabits, so it's again going to be a USB 2 cable. If we take a look at it, yes, USB 1.1 and 2.0 with voltages now uh, not only up to 20 volts, but up to 48 volts or nominally maximum of 50 volts and 5 amps to go to the 240 or 250 watts. Uh, if we take a look at the connector, it's the same as the last time. Uh, the pins required for USB 3 and 4 and uh, sideband units are not connected, only uh, the D plus and D minus, again, for the USB 2 compatibility. The Vibus resistance is a bit lower, it's at 70 milliohms, 
So it is a bit newer, you can see that the connections are a bit better, there, there is no dirt, there is no um, rust or any kind of um, dirt on it. And again, we do have the same wind ID, so it's the 05AC, so both of them are actually uh, Apple cables. This one now says 10 nanoseconds latency, so it specifies itself as 1 meters or below, but actually I know that it's 2 meters, so I'm not sure if they lied or if they measured the latency themselves and came to the conclusion that it's uh, below 10 nanoseconds. And this one is a hardware version 01 and software version 01 with the same um, uh, messages that came from the e-marker, so we know that it's actually working. Now, with this in mind, <coughs> both of the cables that I've just shown you are, I think, below 30 or at least 40 euros, so this I think I got for 35 euros, the other one I actually got for free, but if you buy it online, it should be uh, 25 euros around uh, this price tag. This cable is an original Thunderbolt 4 cable that came from Apple, so it is at a price point of around 150 euros. And if we connect it, then we can see that it is a quite uh, performing cable. The data speed is now up at 40 gigabits. Uh, the charging power is down at 100 watts, which is interesting uh, due to the fact that the, the cable should be able to do more. And now we get the message that there is a shorted pin. This can mean two things, that either the cable is actually broken, but I don't think it is, honestly. It can mean that the cable is active, so that there is an active um, driving circuitry inside the cable that tells the, the one end that the other end is doing something, and this means that if we are actually measuring continuity between point A and point B, between the left and the right connector, then we are not going to see continuity um, through, but we can see shorted pins due to the fact that they are actively driving them in some kind of, of configuration that is only working with USB or Thunderbolt uh, performance and uh, protocols. So. If we take a look at the specs, then we can see, uh, yes, due to the shorter pins, we only have USB 2 pins connected straight through and the USB 4 enabled. Uh, USB 3.0 and 3.1 is uh, both, both are disabled to the effect that we cannot actually measure continuity, so we have to believe the cable um, saying, yes, I am a USB 4 cable, but we cannot actually verify if the needed pins are connected. Similar to the first cable, it can do 20 volts at 5 amp, uh, so this is actually a 100 watt uh, Thunderbolt cable and not a 240 watts. And the USB connector, if we take a look at it, is going to be the same as the, the two before, just with the sideband units 1 and 2 uh, connected to, so it's, it's uh, ground and VBUS, D plus, D minus from USB 2, uh, CC1 and CC2 for the power delivery communications, as well as the sideband unit 1, sideband unit 2 connector, but not the connectors responsible for USB 3.0, 3.1 and 4. Uh, the RX1, RX2, TX1, TX2 pins. And if we take a look at the details, then we can see, okay, uh, there's a shorted pin inside, but the pins that we can actually measure are the ones that I've, I've just told you. Uh, additionally, to CC1 and CC2 for the power delivery communications. The VPOS resistance at 76 milliohms is, is kind of okay. And now to the interesting fact why it told us that there is a shorted pin. Uh, it is actually an active cable, so the cable itself is working or at least we cannot tell if the cable has uh, inside uh, a fault inside somewhere or if there's a broken cable or short inside we can just tell that the shorter pin message on on the first page is not actually uh, true and cannot be left with without reading the the active cable the vendor is 05c so it's an apple cable uh, 20 volts 5 amps and it's actually used before gen 3 cable so this means that besides the Thunderbolt 4, it can, USB, can do USB 4 Gen 3, which uh, is also indicated by the 40 gigabits per second uh, data transmission rate it can maximally do. And now the latency is uh, 60 to 70 nanoseconds, which would indicate a 7 meter long cable, but that's defi def definitely not true. This latency is due to the fact that there is an active driving chip inside, drives the data from point A to point B to guarantee si signal integrity and therefore it takes longer to transmit data from A to B. And we cannot believe this approximate 7 meter uh, um, indication given here. Uh, this cable already uses hardware version 4 and software version 3, so it again is not the first kind of cable that they, they manufactured. And we got the vendor defined message and the vendor defined ID, so everything seems to be in order. With this, 
uh, we now know that all three of the cables are actually working or seem to be working, we can charge our MacBook with all three of them because the MacBook itself, the charger that I've, I've shown, you, shown you in the beginning, only outputs 60 watts maximum. But if we want to go above that, if we want to connect uh, a more powerful computer, if we want to connect the monitor additionally to that or some uh, external devices, <clears throat> then we need to have a bigger power supply as well as a cable that's actually capable of performing more than 60 watts more than 100 watts, depending on what we actually want to draw power in the end. With this, um, I come to an end. If you have any questions, just let me know, put them in the comments below, and um, have fun.